Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm really excited today because we've got Sarah Auger doing uh, this morning's Rock Solid video. She's going to be asking the question, how do we know? And we're going to be looking at the Bible, what the Bible is, and how we know that what the Bible, uh, what's contained within the Bible is true. It's a really great video. So why don't you get ready for Sarah's video? Hello and welcome to this week's youth video. My name's Sarah and I'm one of the pastors here at Riverside. I also head up the Academy Gap Year programme uh, and hopefully might see some of you on that in the future. Um, whether you are joining us today at Riverside House or whether you are uh, doing church at home in someone's house today, then you are really super welcome. Uh, today we're starting a new series called Christian, exploring together what it means to be a Christian and the reasons why Christians believe all the sorts of things that they do. And today we're going to be looking uh, at the Bible, so we're going to start the whole series looking at the Bible and whether uh, we're able to know that what the Bible says is actually true. But before we do any of that, I'm going to test your memories to see how awake you are feeling today. Uh, in a second, we're going to pause the video and I'd like you to tell someone in the room that you're in or maybe someone in the house that you're in at the moment what you did on New Year's Day this year. So on the 1st of January 2022, what were you doing? Who were you with? Uh, and if that seems too easy, why don't you give yourselves a bit of an extra challenge to say what were you wearing or what did you eat for dinner? <music> So I don't know how you got on, uh, but I realised that my memory is completely rubbish because I had to check with other people in my family and look at our shared photo drive to actually see where we were on New Year's Day. We were having a lovely day with friends. So if my friends are watching this, I had a lovely day with you. Uh, sorry, I didn't remember. But I definitely couldn't tell you what I ate because I couldn't remember where I was. Um, but now we've got your brains warmed up, we are going to do another game called Real News or Fake News. And we're going to be thinking a little bit about whether we can trust what the Bible is true. So I thought we'd play this game to help us think about some general facts in life and for us to think about whether we think they're real news, something that's true, or whether they're fake news, something that's not true. So I'm going to read seven in total, I'll read them out and then I'm going to give you the answers. So number one, real news or fake news? Pineapples take around two years to grow. Second one, uh, all elephants are first born male. Third one, a headless chicken lived for 18 months in the mid-1940s. Fourth one, cheetahs can't roar. Fifth one, human babies are born without elbows. Sixth one, Nintendo was founded in 1889. And final one, there are more tigers in captivity in America than there are in the rest of the world, uh, throughout the rest of the world in the wild. So have a little think, what do you reckon? Fake news or real news? So the first one was real news, the second one was fake news, the third one was real news and if you google him he was called Mike and you can see really disturbing photos of a chicken running around with that head. Uh, fact four is real news, uh, actually cheetahs can only meow like cats, they can't roar. The fifth one was fake news, but babies are born without kneecaps, so they do have elbows but no kneecaps. Uh, the sixth one was real news, uh, so long before Switch and Mario Nintendo were making card games. And the final one is uh, real news, which you will know the answer to if you ever watched the programme Tiger King, because there are loads and loads of tigers, uh, unfortunately, in captivity in America. So I don't know how you got on with that game and how many you got right, but sometimes it can be really hard to work out what is fake news and what is real news. Particularly nowadays where people can put whatever they like on social media that we can read without us really knowing whether it's true or not. And as we think about this in relation to the Bible today, we're going to read from the book of Luke in the New Testament, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. So why don't you take some time now to find a Bible? Um, I'm going to read it in a minute as well, so don't worry if you haven't got a Bible. Um, but if you have got a Bible with you, then maybe just turn to that passage uh, and we're going to read it. And as we read it, or as you read it, have a think about what stands out in the passage to you. Is there anything that surprises you or maybe you hadn't thought about before? 
Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. They use the eyewitnesses' reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write an accurate account for you, most honourable Theolopathists, so you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. So what maybe in that passage stands out to you? Is there anything that kind of surprises you or that you heard for the first time? Um, just, I guess, with the people around you now or just think to yourself, just pause the video and have a little think about what are the things uh, that really stand out to you. When we think about whether the Bible is true or not, it can be really helpful to think about some of the incredible claims the Bible makes. It claims there is a God who made the universe. It claims that God sent his son Jesus into the world to die on a cross for people like you and me. It claims that Jesus performed miracles and that he was raised from the dead and that he now lives with all of his followers by God's spirit. Now we need some serious evidence if we're going to believe that these claims are real. Because if Jesus was a real person who did rise from the dead, then actually that would help us to believe the Bible because Jesus is the centre of it all. So if that bit is true, then surely the rest of it must be true. The Old Testament talks about how one day he will come to restore our relationship with God. And the New Testament tells us about his life and what happened after he did rise from the dead. So let's look at seven reasons why I think we can believe that all that it's, the Bible says that Jesus did was true. So number one, historians as well as other kind of faith groups agree that Jesus was a real person. There is more historical evidence outside of the Bible that Jesus lived than there is for some of the Roman emperors who we learn about in our history lessons. Number two, the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, so the first four books that start the New Testament, were written well within the living memory of eyewitnesses who lived with Jesus. Now, a little challenge for you within that. What is your earliest memory? My earliest memory is of my granddad, Charlie, who died when I was three. I really remember sitting on his lap and taking his glasses off and putting them back on ago, again. Now, I'm 44 now, which is horrendous, but that was 41 years ago. But I still remember that event, even though it wasn't written down. And my dad, who was there at the same time, confirms that it happened. I was there, sat there on my granddad's lap. The memories the disciples had of Jesus weren't of such everyday events. Their memories were of miracles and life changing. So if I can remember a fairly dull event from 41 years ago, I think that the disciples would definitely remember the incredible things that they saw Jesus do. Some of the stories in the Bible about the disciples are pretty embarrassing for them, like Peter denying that he knew Jesus, about arguments they had with one another. So why would they have included these stories, which no one else knew had happened, unless they were true? Surely they'd just include good things. If Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, why didn't the Romans just show his body from the tomb that the, so the people knew it was made up? It also doesn't make sense that the disciples made it up and hid his body, as so many of them actually faced death and persecution for telling people that Jesus rose from the dead. The disciples were a group of ordinary and scared people when Jesus died. But after he rose from the dead, they became people who started a movement that changed the entire world and why we believe what we believe now. And if there is a God who made the universe, then it's not crazy to think he might well have just raised Jesus from the dead. And then finally, reading the Bible faithfully doesn't mean we have to always read it literally. Jesus himself often used non-literal language like metaphors and stories to tell us important truths. So some of the other parts of the Bible can be read like that too. But there are many parts of the Bible that are clearly meant to be read literally. For example, the claim that Jesus literally rose from the dead. So can you uh, kind of remember those seven points? What were the seven things that made us think that maybe actually what happened to Jesus was true? What was maybe the one that convinced you the most? Or what was new to you? Or maybe what didn't you think that you agree with? Why don't you just pause the video now and have a little think? So as we finish today, why don't you spend a few minutes praying, either on your own or with those around you, that God would help you to understand and engage with the Bible more. You might also like to commit to doing the Mark Challenge, committing to read the book of Mark in the Bible over the month ahead. There are 16 chapters in it, so if you read half a chapter a day, you'd be able to finish it in just about a month. 
maybe you could make yourself a bookmark so pop in your bible and as you read through the book of mark kind of use it just to help you uh, uh, remember where you are and to pray that actually uh, jesus would help you understand more of him through what you read in the bible so why don't we uh, just take some time to pray now as we finish knowing that actually there is so many different things that we can think about when it comes to the Bible, knowing that actually uh, we have a God who wants to give us uh, this amazing journey that we can read about in his word. So let's uh, just pray as we finish our time together. God, I just thank you for your word, the Bible. Thank you that we can read about the life of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus was a real person and we know that historically there is so much evidence that tells us that Jesus lived, uh, that he was a real person down on this earth. And God, we thank you for the amazing truth that he did die and then rise again from the dead. And we pray uh, that you would help each one of us to uh, really get stuck into the Bible, help us as we read it, help us to understand the words that we read and help us to use it as a tool to get to know you better. Amen. Well, it's been great joining with you this morning and I hope as we begin this journey of this series at Christian that you would learn more and more about what it means to be a Christian and what it means for you personally to know Jesus at the centre of your life. Mm-hmm.